As we discussed earlier, evidence suggests that ancient Egyptians were aware of the significance of the pineal gland and may very well have understood what we now know as DMT. This is the same Egyptian culture from which virtually the entirety of Western culture and the three largest world religions has evolved. Moses, who is equivocally considered a prophet by Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, led his people out of Egypt, eventually having a revelation while speaking to a god in a burning bush on a mountaintop. But what was this bush that caused the Prince of Egypt's great epiphany, inspiring him to write the Ten Commandments? Many mainstream scientists at reputable universities around the world now believe that it may have been none other than the acacia bush. The same bush revered by Egyptian culture for having birthed their gods. Could this be a coincidence? One might argue that the desert conditions of Egypt could have caused a wild brush fire, much like the fires that plague the state of California today. If Moses was close enough to one of these bushes, even with their minimal concentration of 1-3% to DMT, the sheer volume of acacia burned would definitely cause a profound entheogenic experience, allowing Moses to communicate with the wise god in the burning bush. But Moses wasn't the only character from the Old Testament who was seemingly aware of DMT. In one chapter of Genesis, Jacob meets God face to face, wrestling and struggling with him before eventually having his life spared. This is clearly in line with the ayahuasca experience, which many say puts you in the presence of God and allows you to face your judgment. But correlation doesn't necessitate causation. Genesis goes on to have Jacob reminisce on the event. And Jacob named the place Peniel, explaining, Certainly I have seen God face to face and have survived. Genesis 32.30 30. And it didn't stop in Egypt. Even the Zeus-fearing pagans of pre-Christian Greece seem to have been aware of DMT. With an elite cult centered upon a mysterious elixir called Kaikion, involving rituals, visions, and conjuring of an afterlife. This ritual was held so sacred that in 415 BC, a Greek aristocrat was condemned for taking part in what is known as the Eleusinian Mysteries, in a private residence for recreational purposes. This ancient brew may well have been mixed with an MAOI-containing plant native to the region, such as Syrian rue, and could have been analogous to ayahuasca. This is not as far-fetched as it may seem. It is well documented that ancient Greek physicians used Syrian rue in medicine preparations, and acacia was also well revered and is native to Greece. What's more, ancient Greece saw the inclusion of the pine cone in much of its art, and may be the first culture to do so in world history. The pine cone is thought by many to represent the pineal gland, whose shape is somewhat similar to a pine cone. The same symbol has come to be found in most world religions and is even visible on the lawn of St. Peter's Basilica in Vatican City. If this pine cone truly does represent the pineal gland, the early church may have been aware of the significant role it plays in religious experience. Perhaps even in the religious experiences of Jesus Christ himself. Coming up next, we'll explore the role of DMT and Christianity.